It is the subject of a state law enforcement division criminal investigation tonight. Our lead investigator Jody Barr joins us with years of the speaker's spending record. So Jody, what did you find? Well, what we found was nearly a half million dollars went to the speaker's travel, computers, cell phones, and memberships to two of the city's upscale dinner clubs. Now, the law allows politicians to spend this money on direct campaign costs or once elected, they can spend it on office-related expenses. The problem for the people who fought to get Harold's spending investigated, they don't think Harold spent, in this case, within the law. For the last nine months, we've asked House Speaker Bobby Harrell to provide receipts and invoices to show how he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars out of his campaign account. In January, on Harrell's first day back at the State House, we delivered him another written request to see his records. Mr. Speaker, hey, how are you? I want to hand deliver this Freedom of Information Act request. We uh, sent this to um, Mr. Foster more than three, three and a half months ago, actually. Six months later, Harold still has not opened his books. Does that on the surface look bad? Yeah, it's pretty obvious that uh, like Robert Ford, Bobby Harrell, both of them, the Charleston touchdown twins of abuse of office, has been out of control. I don't believe for one second anyone is buying that that's an acceptable use of campaign money. Ashley Landis and John Kringle, both State House watchdogs, have asked for an investigation of Bobby Harrell's campaign spending for more than a year. In February, Landis's persistence paid off when SLED agreed to investigate allegations that Harrell misused his campaign cash. When you look at and analyze this account, What's the impression you get? Pull back 30,000 feet and, and just consider the larger truth here. The speaker reimbursed himself more than $300,000 from his campaign account and cannot account for the specific expenditures, does not have the receipts for them, um, does not have documentation, and we're not able to know what he actually spent that money for. A WIS analysis of Harold's online campaign records between 2008 and 2013 13 show he spent campaign cash on his personal website, computers, cell phones, and memberships to two private downtown dinner clubs. Harold's campaign travel reimbursements totaled $282,999. Campaign records show Harold's campaign paid Greg Foster, Harold's taxpayer funded spokesman, $11,819 for legislative travel. Since 2009, the campaign paid Foster $1,000 every month to maintain Harold's campaign website. Harold spent $117,507 on computer services, computer equipment, legislative email, and for the BobbyHarold.com website. Harold's records also show he spent $54,834 on cell phones at an average of $350 each month. Harold also paid membership fees to the Palmetto Club and to the Capital City Club, two private restaurants, one block over from the State House. Records show Harold's also spent campaign money on meals and receptions at both clubs. The House, please come to order. Harold won his Charleston County House race last November and is not currently campaigning for office. Should there be any reason for campaign to be spending money when the candidate is not currently seeking elected office? You wouldn't think so, but money is being spent 24-7 uh, and the accounts are, are, are slush funds. Uh, there's no way to put a smiling face on it. it. It needs to be, it's a terrible abuse, it needs to be stopped. We've seen a lot of expenditures coming out of those accounts that in no way have anything to do with official duties. And they are certainly not ordinary expenses, particularly in the case of the Speaker. Speaker Harrell agreed to interview with us last month on the last day of session. Harrell would not talk with us before the session, but asked that we wait until the House adjourned for the day. We waited for four hours as the House dealt with the governor's vetoes at 7 p.m. Harold ended the session and took off. We waited another 20 minutes as the chamber emptied. Harold's spokesman sent us an email later that night saying the speaker had a prior obligation and would not make the interview. We made one last attempt Monday morning to speak with Harold. We went to his Charleston insurance office.
totally discard with him. Absolutely. See if uh, he could call me back sure. as soon as he can. I certainly will. Thanks, bud. All right. Appreciate it. Harold never called us back. Does he owe the public the opportunity to inspect these campaign records as far as where he spent the money, how he spent it, and what he spent that money on? Absolutely, he does. And he has offered, again, no explanation to the public as to how these dollars were spent. Kringle says contributors are being deceived with the spending he's seen in Harold's case. They think when they donate $500 to a candidate, this candidate's going to use the money to run for election. That's what they gave them the money for. They don't think the guy's going to use it as a slush fund to travel all over the country in a private airplane. As far as Sled and the Attorney General, they both declined to comment about the progress of their investigation, but they did tell me it was open tonight. Have they given any indication how long this investigation will take? We don't know. We know it's been five months since it started on Valentine's Day of this year, but no clue as to how long it may take. And as we mentioned earlier, it could all still be legitimate yeah. spending. Yeah, I mean, I mean there that, could be a reason for all this. That's the point we keep trying to drive home here is if Harold were to sit down, show us these records, there could be a legitimate explanation you know, that these were campaign related or directly related to his office, but still multiple attempts. We showed you again there. Harold will not stop and, and show us what but he's got. But does he have to? He doesn't have to, no. He, he's well, got to maintain if, these records, but... I think ultimately, though, the accountability is to the taxpayer. Is there any way for taxpayers to know the le spending was legitimate without him opening those records? Without him opening it up. And plus, he owes, you know, some explanation to the people who contributed to his campaign and gave him that money to campaign on right. to show him how he the spent that money. Donors. All right, well, well Jody Barr. You may get a phone call tomorrow, tonight, Let's even. Hope. Let's hope. <laughs> All right, Jody, thank we'll you, let you so know much. tomorrow. Thank you.